We're talking about uh, recruiting. We had something from that interview with Jay Araji that he said when Oregon got DeCorian Moore from Duncanville, people in Texas in college football were starting to feel the squeeze of Oregon. Mm-hmm. And they're in line to get a Florida top defensive back today. All the crystal balling happening on these recruiting sites says Oregon's the favorite to land him. They're in the running for two other players. They land these. They could have the number one recruiting class. Now, they haven't won a national championship as well documented by all the rival fan bases of Oregon. Mm -hmm. However, there is clearly something happening right now, and I'm not going to speak to the business side of this because I don't know enough. I'm too stupid. Nike is struggling in some regards. I think everybody's well documented that, the stock, all that stuff. And I thought it was interesting. Colin, I want to say it was yesterday, when he says stuff, and he was just here this weekend, he was tweeting about the zoo. Randomly, the Portland Zoo, Colin Cowherd tweet. It's not the Portland Zoo. It's the <laughs> Oregon Zoo, but thanks, Colin, for hanging out with us. Uh, but he mentioned something in his opening monologue, and I thought it was, I took note of it, of Nike struggling, what their future is, all that kind of stuff. I, again, I don't know enough about all that stuff. Yeah. Whatever. It's interesting that they're in that spot and being talked about when a lot of the takeaway seems to be that Phil Knight is starting to feel the age thing. Phil Knight is at this point where it's, what is he, is he 86? He's up there, man. 85, 86, we yep. just had the PK. He's to a point where... <laughs> That's a good point. We should know his age. We just had the PK 85. Well, was that last year? <laughs> I think, I think it, was it was last year. year. So yeah. he's, he's 86 years he's old. He's 86, yeah. thank you. <laughs> but um, that many in sports think he is ramping some of this up for his alma mater mm -hmm. because he's tired of not seeing them win, and he does want to push them over the top. Now, I don't know if that means this year, but it is interesting that, like, the big backer of Oregon that many people have talked about, it does have a little bit of a ramp-up <laughs> feel of, all right, guys, I'm done messing around. We're doing what we need to do. We're winning a natty, Sure, I think, before he, you know, gets to the – the end of the road or what yes. have you. And hopefully hopefully it's 25 years from now, <laughs> Phil. Let's keep <laughs> finding some anti-aging techniques, whatever you can come up with. I'm all for. I, I also chuckle at this notion a little bit. I understand why that narrative is out there. There's been a lot of pieces written by people who have no clue about anything that's going on inside the Oregon program. They just see the way that they're getting recruits and are running with this. Phil Knight spending every penny of his net worth to, you know, land recruits. And, you know, uh, Dante Moore got a billion dollars. And who wants a billion dollars? The idea that he's now ramping it up, I also laugh at because he has been ramping this up for 30 years. You just couldn't legally buy players until when did NIL officially go into existence? Two five years, years ago? Five years ago. Was it that five years? Was it five years ago? I thought it was more recent than that, but maybe hey, it's NIL. the last year. That's like two years ago. Yeah, I thought it was like the last two years well, that you can legally buy players oh. and get name, image, and likeness in this regard. Okay. Now, I'm not saying Phil Knight wasn't, I have no clue what he was doing behind the scenes in years previous. Somebody texted in, uh, dirt, you know, the chip was probably paying players too. Of course he was. Everybody's always been doing this. 2021. 2021. Yeah, so we're NIL. three years in. Um, it's just always happened, you know, below the table. Now it's all above the table. He has pumped in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to that university yeah. over the last 30 years. For anybody who has walked, you know, stepped foot on the Oregon campus, it looks, I went to Oregon, my last year there was 2010, 11, 2010 or 11. The ca I don't even recognize the campus anymore. That's how much has changed in the last 13 years. I almost don't recognize parts of Eugene when you get off the freeway. Like that's just, and a lot of that is due to the growth of the football program and the money that Phil Knight has donated. He's building a new indoor practice facility. He has revamped the scoreboard. He built the athletic tutoring center. He is like every, the new locker room. He has built so much and spent so much for the last 30 years. I understand that, yes, he's getting up there in age and now you can legally buy players and he has a massive role in that. Nobody denies it. We should, but, we should phrase this as pay players. Pay Pay players, thank you. Players. Pay players. But he is also he has been ramping this up since 1995 and everything around that university with their connections to Nike, the facilities. This has been a long term project for him. I, I hear you and I don't disagree with most of what you said, but I, I, I would say there is a little bit of a feel and I, I, I feel like in saying this, it it um, it, it kind of. Uh, takes away from Lanning's abilities a little bit, and I don't mean to do that. I think it takes a certain person to sell. Like you mentioned Walter Nolan, like Oregon didn't lose on money there. <laughs> they they lost. Well, for that's whatever the thing. Other I don't reasons. know. Did they? I have no clue. Well, my Nobody guess, knows. My guess would be no. And Kirby said this yesterday. He said, you know, not all of the players and coaches have kind of echoed this. So I I'm going to believe that it it is a thing. 
not all of the players are choosing their destinations on the size of the paycheck. No. And so, like, but well, every time a recruit goes to Oregon, what is it? Well, no, but you can play that game with all of the big <laughs> sure. programs. Ohio State is openly basically saying we spent $20 million on yeah. our team. And and I heard their uh, new AD, Ross Bjork, in Cleveland, he basically said, yeah, we financially yeah. have to keep up with this We stuff. would like to win a national title again. So I don't think Oregon is unique in that regard. And I don't think that they're losing players like Walter Nolan because of paycheck size. I, I do think there is an element where let's not completely dismiss the coaching impact. Like, I thought Lane Kiffin was really good at SEC Media Day, and I actually commended him a lot to be able to do that after your dad, even though you you probably know your dad's passing soon. Yeah, he was up there in age. Dude, like, you, you're never prepared to lose your parent, right? It's always going to affect us in different ways. And without his dad, like, he's not in football. And he still went up there and I thought gave really good answers and talked a lot about, you know, Nick Saban, the impact of that, all that stuff. But yeah. my point is, it, as much as the ability of the staff it is to get those guys to want to go to Eugene. My read is, yes, he has donated and ramped this up for a long time. You're not wrong. I do think there's an element of, let's push this just a smidge harder in the I'm not getting younger category. Yeah. Oregon is loaded this year. They keep recruiting the way they are. They're going to be loaded next year and the year after that. And that is what gives you the best possible chance. This is year three for Dan Lanning. Year three. Usually four or five, if they don't win it this year, that's when you're like, and I think they're the fourth best team on that college football game. They're about a top five team for most people. This is when those pay dividends, and and I don't think it's a whole lot different than what he's done, but I, I do think there's an a, a, a smidge of, I'm 86. Let's let's really just we're going all. The, not that he hasn't gone all in. Yeah. But let's just ramp it up a smidge even more than what we have. Very well could be, man. And I'm all for it. I hope he keeps going all in. He's got his net worth is 32 billion dollars, man. I'll take every single one of those pennies <laughs> if it leads to Oregon winning a national championship. The reality is, if you want to be elite in this sport, it takes putting together arguably three or four top five recruiting classes. Like, if you want a chance to legitimately win a national title and contend year in and year out, that's where you have to be. There are outliers that obviously exist, that random teams like TCU will make their way to a national championship game. What happened to TCU last year? They don't recruit at a top five level. They had one year where everything popped, everything went right. They won a, won a bunch of close games. They got embarrassed in the national title game, and they were back to being irrelevant this last year, which is probably where they're going to be for the foreseeable future. If you want a chance to compete year in and year out in this sport, you have to recruit at a top five level. You have to bring in one of the two, three, four, five best recruiting classes in the country. And Lanning is he's teetered on that last year I think was the first year in 2023 that he broke through or 2024 I guess it would be and broke through and had a top five class I think at Oregon and now he's trending to maybe have number one so they're clearly going in that direction but if you want to win at the highest level in this sport that's what you have to do